So welcome back to Sandy's Chop Shop. So we're working through tearing down this Skywell. Again, this is a Chinese EV that was purchased by Sandy about three years ago. And it's just been kind of sitting around. We said, decided that it's finally time to tear into it and really understand the differences in the manufacturing process and anything else that we can identify within the Skywell. Now, <laughs> I actually recently had kind of an epiphany. Uh, I've been working here for several years now and I've realized what my job is. I do math for a living. We make basically graphical models of all of the different manufacturing processes that we see within a vehicle. Using those models, we then calculate labor rates, cycle times, all of those things to try and come up with a price. And you see the guys sitting in the back, they're all working through the Skywell currently, building those models to really understand what the total costs are. But today, I wanted to talk about the doors. Um, this is the rear door from the Skywell. The front door is already disassembled. Here are a couple, the passenger side, which I will not be disassembling. I will just be kind of copying the prices over from the driver's side doors to the passenger doors. Now, when I was modeling the door panel, just the trim, I was actually kind of surprised that I came up with a cost of roughly $65 for all of the decorative panel. Now, at first I wanted to say that seems like a high price for a Chinese vehicle. However, this is a wrapped component. This is a wrapped component. This is a wrapped component. This is an in-mold decorative film, chrome, chrome. There is a light pipe buried in here. Once I really started looking at everything that's involved, um, I was more comfortable with my price as is. I'm still gonna have to review my math model and all of my cost centers for the labor rates that are assumed within the China market, but that's what I was coming up for the trim. But it's not just the trim and the individual cost of the components, it's also using those components. How am I installing them? So I wanted to show you something with this door. Now again, the door has an outer stamping and an inner stamping. Then the outer stamping is kind of hemmed along the edge, locking it in place. But I wanted to talk about this inner stamping. You'll notice that the window the window motor and the window regulator is all buried inside of this door. This is what we would call a stick built door. Basically because after this door was painted, which is most likely on the exact same line um, that they're painting the rest of the body, they would either take the door off to do this assembly or they would try and do it on vehicle online. But all of this is a blind install. There are rails for the window track that are being bolted through this door panel. So I have to load all of these parts, the motor, the electrical wiring, and try and bolt them in place blind. Here's the thing. If labor is very expensive, specifically OEM labor on their main assembly line, you would not want to do this. But if labor is inexpensive, but yet material is more expensive, then you would. Let me show you something. This is the door module from the Cybertruck. These are the rails which are tucked inside of this door and bolted in place. These rails are bolted to this large plastic panel. This panel goes onto a door that has a giant opening and it fits in place, bolts around the perimeter. That is easy OEM labor. But I had to pay for this plastic panel and I had to play, pay for these rails. This one is only paying for the rails. Again, if I cut a giant hole out of this panel, I still have to pay for all the steel that I cut out. So I'm paying for all that steel, I'm paying for this panel, and I'm paying for the rails. So if material costs more than labor, I would want to do this. But if labor costs more than material, I would want to do this. But you can go a step farther. Here's the door module from the Kia EV9. You will notice it does not have these metal rails. This rail is molded into the plastic panel. The only thing that's added to this panel are the cables, the holders, and basically the little wheel bearings. This eliminates the cost of a lot of these components, but it's still in a panel that is a separate panel and I'm still paying for all the metal that I cut out inside of the door. 
So these are consider considerations that we make. If I am in a country that has a low cost of labor, but yet I don't want to pay for all the raw material, I don't want to pay a supplier to build this for me, I don't want to pay for the logistics and shipping of having this component shipped into my facility, then maybe I want to do this. But if I'm in a country where labor is high and I need to be able to put this door together in less than a minute, I will then have a supplier build all of this assembly, ship it to me so that I can just push it in place. I bring this up because there is no one right way to do it. It all depends on where it's being produced and what the different considerations are. So these are different styles. They are all valid for their specific region, for their specific vehicle, for their specific geometry. Now there's something else unique about this door um, that I wanted to make mention of, and that is Taylor welded blanks. I don't know how well it'll show up on this camera. But see this line? This line running all the way down the inner door panel. This is because they had two different steel sheet stocks that they laser welded together and then they stamped the entire inner panel out of that laser welded sheet. Why would they do that? Well, this side is supporting the hinges. This needs to be stronger. This side is really supporting nothing. It can be lighter. So I can actually save money by having a lighter gauge steel here than I am here. I would be saving weight in the vehicle overall, which is important for an electric vehicle to be able to reduce weight. However, I'm paying for this laser welding step on all of my sheet stock material that's going to be used on the inner door skin. Not all doors have this. Some they have determined that it's just cheaper to stamp it all out of one thickness of material. We can eat the weight. Some they want to be very, very light, very, very thin. So again, it's an option. There's no one right way of doing it because for me, I have to calculate the labor and all of the machinery and processing for adding in this welding alongside the cost of stamping this entire inner door panel. So this is the door seal going around the perimeter of the door. This is a very, very cheap part. Most people would just ignore it, but I do want to make mention of this. Basically, the bulk of this seal is an extruded foamed rubber, but not all of it. You'll notice there are some corners. Basically what they've done is they have taken extruded sections, put them into a tool, and actually molded these unique features to them. You'll see a parting line here, and you'll see a parting line here. So this section was molded in and bonded to this main extrusion. Basically just tears right at that line. Now, that means that this is not a universal door seal. These features make it unique to this door, even though the extrusion may be some sort of a universal profile. By having anything being very specific, it actually increases costs for that vehicle, for that door. These features are what make this unique and what add a lot to the cost. This extrusion, if it was the same for every vehicle on the road, 90% of this would be something that's inexpensive and the little 5% for the corners would be where most of the cost is. So this is from the door trim panel. Now, this entire door panel would have been built up and assembled prior to being applied to this door. In North America, basically this entire component would be built by a supplier who would then ship it in as one big door. I'm not really sure for this plant whether they would have built this up themselves and then presented to the door on their main assembly line or if they would have shipped this out to a supplier. But what was actually bothering me were the cable and electrical connections inside of the door. So electrical connection for the door, window switch, a speaker, this cable is for the um, handle to open the door, but you'll notice this very narrow section. Installing this barrel into the door handle um, actually takes a certain amount of movement, but because I'm attached hard to the door here, because this is attached hard to the door here, if this door is completely built up and presented 
for install, you have to try and reach your hand in there, make those electrical connections, and make the connection for this cable. I've been trying to understand how they would have done that on the assembly line. What components could have been removed and applied afterwards? And the only one that really can is the switch pack. So either this is a very complicated assembly. Uh, they're relying on their employees of having very small arms, very small hands. Normally we would leave extra material, which we would call strain relief, in order to be able to make those connections but there's not a lot of extra left on this door. Again, this vehicle is being completely stripped down. We're pretty far along, actually. There's still a lot of calculations for the total cost and all of the manufacturing and assembly processes that we are working through, but there's quite a bit behind us. But what I wanted to make mention of are these hinges. Here are the door hinges for the rear door. You'll notice these nuts for securing the hinges. There's a stud in the body, there's a nut on the outside, but even with that loose, this does not come off. Look inside of the vehicle. You'll see this round hole. There is actually a bolt location through that hole that's securing into the back of this hinge, which means this hinge is installed from both sides to the vehicle to lock it in place. That's something that normally you would not want to do because that creates a lot of movement in the assembly plant, going from inside to outside. Also, let's say I needed to do some sort of an adjustment of this door. There is no real adjustment on the body side. All adjustment would be on the door itself. So if this was built perfectly every time, that's great. It saves time and adjustment. But if there's any variation, the only variation they would be able to make up is at this bolt location on the door itself. So I'm continuing with my teardown and analysis for the doors for this Skywell. It will still be a few more days for me to completely disassemble this door, accounting for all of the assembly steps, every push pin, every bolt location, every RTV sealant, um, the time that it takes to put that on. We are working through all of that for every component within Skywell. Normally these things take several months to completely tear down, but we hope that you will stick around for future videos to see other components within the Skywell and try and understand how they were able to get a vehicle at a price point, an electric vehicle of $35,000, having this type of, for me, interior features that would be uncommon at that price point. So please stick around uh, for future videos and have a good day.